So far in my career as a motoring journalist, I've spent very little time in Rolls Royces. In fact, I can only think of one that I've driven. But to be honest, I haven't really felt like I've been missing out. Until, that is, they unveiled this. The Rolls Royce Dawn. This, to me, is something a bit special. The simple but rather beautiful shape exudes glamour and elegance. It is imposing but not brutish. It feels timeless. A Rolls Royce for the ages. When I first saw the car, it spoke of, well, the Italian Riviera. Sadly, that's a little far away. So we've come to Cornwall, the English Riviera instead, swapping gelato for a Mr. Whippy. This might just be the most serene car review I have ever done. If you're expecting any of this, I'm afraid you're going to be sadly disappointed. It's not that the Dawn couldn't be driven aggressively, I'm sure, if it really needed to be, but only in the same way that I'm sure, theoretically, you could inveigle a nun into a boxing match. And it's not that the Dawn isn't well, very powerful. The V12 under the bonnet puts out 563 brake horsepower and over 600 pounds foot of torque. But those numbers, well, it's just so that it can be serene in the way that it moves. Think of it as like asking Usain Bolt to move from one side of the room to the other, or Eddie Hall to undo a stubborn jar of marmalade. Both would execute their tasks with extreme ease, with plenty of power in reserve. And so it is with the Dawn. Rolls-Royce claims a 0-60 mile an hour time, should such things interest you, of 4.8 seconds, so clearly it can move if you should need to get Aunt Agatha to Ascot lickety-split. But I think it would need to be extremely long odds on a very, very good tip to break with decorum. Then there's the steering. So slow, so creamy, requiring barely any effort. If you jumped straight from this into something conventionally big like an E-Class, then the Mercedes would feel like a Caterham by comparison. My previous reference point for something relaxing to drive was probably a Bentley. But even they retain some sort of scintilla of sportiness, the ghost of Le Mans past, perhaps. This, there is no compromise. It's all about the relaxation. Something that perhaps tells you everything that you need to know about the driving experience is that, while I'm sure the Dawn has a gearbox, you simply never feel it going about its business. Like the rest of the car, it is just seamless. The ride, such heft, such isolation. The downside, of course, is the fact that there are boats out there capable of crossing the Atlantic that are probably smaller. And around here, the lanes are quite narrow. So if this was anything other than a Rolls-Royce, it'd be pretty stressful. As it is, you just sit back, relax, travel slowly, waft along, and admire the beautiful wildflowers. As much as I love the exterior of this car, the interior, well, it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Don't get me wrong, the leather is sumptuous. I also love the power reserve gauge in place of anything so grotesque as a rev counter. But as good as the BMW sourced iDrive is, I think it would irk me a little knowing that every 3 Series or X5 I passed on the road had the same tech. I'd almost rather it just came with a map and a compass. Overall though, the Dawn is simply wonderful, very much its own thing, standing proud in the motoring landscape. But for all that the Dawn is very definitely my favourite current Rolls Royce, the one that I would think about buying should I be lucky enough to win the lottery, there is one small downside. You see, all the Rolls Royces that come with a fixed top roof, you can spec with a particular option. It's called a starlight headlining and it's wonderful. Thousands of little fiber optic cables making it look like you've got the night sky above you. I love it and I'd really, really like it in my Rolls Royce. However, I think I've come up with a rather cunning solution. You see, Cornwall has more to it than just coastline. Head inland and you'll find the wild expanse of Bodmin Moor, home to legends such as Excalibur, 
Daphne du Maurier's Jamaica Inn, and an elusive big cat known simply as the Beast of Bodmin. It is also the highest place in Cornwall, and thanks to the sparse population in this corner of England, there is very little light pollution after the sun has dropped beneath the horizon. So, on a moonless night, this dark sky sight is one of the very best places to put the roof down, recline the seat, and gaze at the heavens in all their glory. While Rolls-Royce might offer hundreds of stars in the roof linings of cars like the Phantom and Wraith, with the dawn, I can see a galaxy.